try to breathe in a way that feels good way down inside. This is a kind of food for the mind, because the mind feeds on pleasure. Always running around looking for pleasures, either physical pleasures or mental pleasures, emotional pleasures. That's what keeps us going. So much, not so much the will to survive, but the will to find pleasure. That's why we want to survive. When people can't find any happiness in life at all, then the idea of survival doesn't mean, mean anything. It's the happiness that keeps us coming back, the pleasure, the ease. The Pali word, sukha, covers all of these things. But as the Buddha discovered, feelings of pleasure can be good for you and they can be bad for you. When he came up with the middle way, or discovered the middle way, it wasn't a kind of a middling halfway between pleasure and pain. It was being selective about pleasures and pain. Some pleasures involve creating suffering for yourself and others or have harmful effects, so you don't want those pleasures. Either in, They can be harmful either in the way you get them or in what they do to the mind. And the same happens with some pains as well. So you want to be selective what kind of pleasures you go for and which kind of pains you're willing to put up with. And that's the middle way. In other words, it looks for the appropriate use of pleasure and pain, feelings of pleasure and pain, in the context of the fact that these things have an impact. So you want to make sure their impact is good. So it's not just the pleasure and then you have to deal with a lot of pain that comes in its wake. You want to find the pleasures that bring more pleasure, higher pleasure. This is one of the reasons why we meditate is this is one of the pleasures that is harmless. There's a passage where the Buddha says if the if people say that you know the people who practice the Dharma are devoted to pleasure, you say, Well yes, that's right, but it has to be a certain kind of pleasure. We're devoted to pleasures that are good for the mind. This one is harmless. You don't have to take anything away from anyone else, you just use the resources you already have. That has a good impact on the mind. A lot of pleasures out there make the mind intoxicated, make it hard for it to see itself. But this is the kind of pleasure where you can see yourself very clearly. Work on your greed, aversion, and delusion. Working from a sense of well-being, because it's hard to let go of those things unless you have something else good to hold on to. So this gives you the good pleasure to hold on to. It gives you nourishment as well. The Buddha compares the pleasures that come from Sensuality is like a dog gnawing on a bone. There's no meat on it left. Everything has been scraped off the bone. There's nothing there but the taste of its own saliva. Whereas the pleasures that come from concentrating the mind, he says, they're like water, honey, butter. Things that are nourishing and that taste good. So try to gain a sense of nourishment as you stay with the breath. It gives you a good place to stay in the present moment, and it does good things for the mind. Like the guy who asked yesterday, is this narcissistic what we're doing here? It's no. If you take good care of your mind, your mind is going to have an impact on the world outside. So if the mind is well taken care of, it's going to have a good impact, both inside and outside. So this is a way of feeding that's good all around. <laughs>